bones of the pelvic girdle and lower limb. The pelvic girdle is the hip bones. There's a left and a right, but each is made up of three separate bones that fuse during puberty and become one single bone. And generally on the models, we can't see exactly where they were separate. The upper one is called the ilium. That means flank. This is the one you can feel in your hip. Its top ridge is the iliac crest. On its medial side, there's this rough part, and that is where it joins to the sacrum. And I only have a left hip bone here, otherwise I would put them together and show you the pelvis. Here's where the two sides would come together in front. The ilium comes down about to here. This is the medial side towards your uh, pelvis, your internal pelvic organs. On the lateral side, there's this large socket. That is where, that's the socket for the ball and socket of your hip. And generally, that socket is where all of the bones have come together. So you'll see color-coded diagrams where they just divide it into thirds. The upper third is the ilium. This socket is called the acetabulum. It's kind of stupid. It means little vinegar cup. So in Canada, people put vinegar on their fries instead of ketchup. And I guess that's what they did in the old cathedral schools where they were naming these things. And they looked at this and said, hey, that looks like those little cups we put our vinegar in. So that's what they called it. There's an incredible number of things in anatomy that are just named, hey, that looks like a, and so that's what it's called. So acetabulum, your hip socket. The ischium or ischium is the thicker of the other two bones. Now that is in the posterior. Okay, so when we have the hip in place, we have this pointed one that comes forward, and this rounded one that goes down. This thick area is called the ischial tuberosity. Those are your sit bones. If you have a kid or a niece or nephew that sits on your, butt, on your lap and you go, man, you got a bony butt, that's what you're feeling is the ischial tuberosities. The bottom part of the ischium comes to about here, where it meets the third bone, the pubis, which comes down from the socket out to this tip and then back. So remember, pubis is pointed. The P's go together. The two pubises from each side would meet here with a pad of fibrocartilage in between. We call that the pubic symphysis. Symphysis is the name for a type of joint that's held by fibrocartilage. Other pieces you may need to know on the hip bone are several little bumps called spines. There are anterior superior and anterior inferior iliac spines, posterior superior and posterior inferior iliac spines, and then the ischial spine. We also call this the greater sciatic notch. You may have heard of your sciatic nerve. And then this, the lesser sciatic notch. This is the iliac fossa. This helps hold some of your pelvic organs. The thigh bone is the femur. It's hard for me to even show the whole thing on this view. It is what fits into your hip socket. When you hear about a hip replacement, what it usually means is not the hip bone, but the part of the femur that forms the hip joint. So at the proximal end, the femur has a head like the humerus, but a much longer neck. I didn't even mention the necks of the humerus because they're not very obvious, but they call this the anatomical neck and this the surgical neck. And you can see how much shorter it is. The femur has a much longer neck so that it can go into this deeper socket. You can also see the femur is much larger overall than the humerus, though they have similarities in shape. At the distal end, the femur is much thicker because it needs to support your weight. Also found at the proximal end are trochanters. These are like tubercles and tuberosities, but 
We call them trochanters on the femur, and this is the only place you'll see a trochanter. This is the greater trochanter. It's across from the head, and this is where a lot of muscles attach that rotate your legs. Here's the lesser trochanter below the head. The major muscles that connect there are the ones that flex your hips or bring your leg up in front. Shaft again. Along the back, this ridge is called the linea aspera. You can also see the greater and lesser trochanter from the posterior. Okay. One way to tell anterior from posterior, on the posterior of the femur, you've got two separate smooth areas. And these are the medial and lateral condyles. They continue underneath. And again, you can tell medial because it's the side with the head. On the front, they come together, form the patellar surface. Patella is your kneecap. Sesamoid bone, and this is where the name sesamoid comes from because it's a little bit pointed at one end like a sesame seed. It's much thinner than it is wide, and on the back it has some shaping that fit into the patellar surface of the femur. And it can slide up and down as you contract your quadriceps muscles, the ones on the front of the thigh that straighten your knee. The patella is inside the tendon of those quadriceps. We also have epicondyles on the femur like we did on the humerus. And again, places for muscle attachment. Femur is the longest bone in the body. The second longest bone in the body is the tibia, one of the two lower leg bones. And this is the one you can feel on your shin, this ridge in the front. Tibia is the only bone that's really flat on top, so think tibia, tibia table. The femur sits on top of it like that, so it needs a good surface. If we look at the end, those are medial and lateral condyles again. These little bumps in the center are for ligaments that will attach to the femur inside this fossa. And that helps hold your knee together. They're called cruciate ligaments because they cross. On the front of the tibia, there's this bump which is the tibial tuberosity, similar to the radial tuberosity, where it sticks out just below the top, and that is where your quadriceps tendon attaches. Along the shaft, you've got the ridge of your shin, and then this is the medial side of the tibia, and this bump here looks kind of like the styloid process on the radius, but we call it a malleolus, which means little hammer. And that's the bump you can feel on the inside of your ankle. This end of the tibia does look a lot like the distal end of the radius. It's just much larger. And it's even got a notch in it, like the ulnar notch, where it fits with the other lower leg bone called the fibula. Fibula means buckle. Looks a little like a belt buckle. And it's so thin that these models are usually bent, but it would actually be usually straight in the body. It's the most nondescript of your long bones. It doesn't really have any obvious bumps and grooves. It's just a little wider at both ends. Now, this end that, if you look at the tip, is rounder, is the head. Okay, see how this one is narrower? The head. There's a little flat spot on the tibia where the head of the fibula fits. And that's at the proximal end. And then at the distal end, the fibula fits into this notch. So, fibular notch. And then the other wide end is called the lateral malleolus. And that's the bump you can feel on the outside of your ankle. So if we put these together in a spot where we can see the whole thing, 
That's roughly how your lower leg comes together. So fibula with LA in it is the lateral bone. Tibia is the medial one. Tibia is like the table. Another way to keep track, if you are a server at a restaurant, you want to get a big tip. Tibia is the big one. If you want to stay out of trouble but not put too much big risk on it, then you only want to tell a little fib. So the fibula is the small one. Okay. In the foot, we have three groups of bones similar to the hand. Instead of carpals, it's tarsals. So then we have metatarsals, and then the toe bones are, again, phalanges. There are only seven tarsals because there's no sesamoid bone like the pisiform. There's just the short bones. The largest is the calcaneus. And this is the heel bone. The second largest is the talus. Think talus is the tallest or talus is on top. This is the one that the tibia stands on. So you have femur on top of tibia on top of talus. They fit together here. Anterior to the talus is the navicular. Think navy. It's another one that looks like a boat. This larger lateral one is called the cuboid bone. It's not exactly a cube, but it's kind of close. And then these other three are called cuneiform, which means wedge-shaped. And they're just medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiform. The big toe is the medial side. Metatarsals, one for each toe, but encased within the foot. The first metatarsal for the big toe is the thickest, but it's not the longest. There's also this large bump on the fifth metatarsal. You may be able to feel that on the side of your foot. And when things are held together properly, the tarsals and metatarsals form your arch. And then phalanges, same as in the hand, there's a proximal phalanx for each toe, a distal phalanx for each, and your big toe has only two bones in it, like the thumb, but your others have three, and so they have proximal, middle, and distal phalanges.